we're going to talk about what is the Turing test. But before we can get into that, we need to talk about, okay, what is intelligence? I mean, we don't really know that much about how the brain works. We kind of know, but intelligence, mind, like it's still very mysterious to us. It might be mysterious to us forever. So given that, how do we pose the question? How do we figure out if we made an AI or a machine that's as smart as we are? We don't even really know what being smart means. It's a problem that we've been wrestling with really long before we were building large language models and groundbreaking machine learning. Alan Turing posed this question in the uh, philosophical journal Mind in the 60s. His solution was something called the Turing test, which has become the de facto test for, for AI. Um, and the idea was pretty simple. You have a person in a room talking to either a person or a chatbot. They don't know, but they know that it could be a person or it could be a chatbot. And they are allowed to antagonistically, they're allowed to do whatever they want to try to figure out, am I talking to a person or am I talking to a, a chatbot, right? Ch like, kind of like ChatGPT, right? If they can't figure it out st with a statistically significant difference, then, then we've hit the bar and that's the best bar we can ever come up with. Here's what I think everyone gets wrong about the Turing test. If you read the original paper from Alan Turing, which I invite everyone to do, we'll put the, a link to it in the comments. It's not, can you fool someone with a robot? You could do that back 50 years ago with Eliza. The question is, if you tell someone you may be talking to a robot and you can do whatever you want to probe it and then make a guess, can you fool me? It's not just, can I be fooled? It's, I have been charged with the task of figuring this out. So I can ask it questions about modern events. I can ask it to do calculations. I can ask it if it's hungry. I can ask whatever I want to do to try to probe not just its intellect, but also how human it is. And only then, if it's able to pass all those tests, has it passed the Turing test. If you know the limitations of language models, if you know the limitations of their ability to reason or do things that are out of domain, meaning outside of the training data that was used to train them, all of a sudden you can find chinks in the armor and you can very easily get them to fail the Turing test. In my opinion, that test has stood the test of time, but we've only really started to push its limits. Is it the one all be all for evaluating you know, artificial reasoning, artificial thought, um, artificial like humanity? Probably not, uh, but honestly, not only has the test remained relevant, I think it's finally the first time that we really get to put this like pretty important piece of uh, writing to work uh, as we start to wrestle with um, what makes a large language model special, but also what are all its limitations. Post below if you think I passed the Turing test. I have generally been told no. But anyway, also you can comment below about other things you want us to define, uh, or you can press subscribe or like, or there's all these other buttons below. You can press all the buttons. Um, for us, please. <laughs>